Last episode, I built a gigantic oil tanker, a forklift truck, and a factory to transport and process Prismarine products from this oil rig to this main storage warehouse. Which brings us one step closer to our next big project. However, I can't leave this area unfinished, primarily this area behind me. I mean, we will be back in the future to add more anyway. This is our main storage depot after all. We're still going to be shipping goods over here. But there are a few things I do want to sort this week so that next week we can move far, far away and start playing with planes. So I know what you're wondering. What could I possibly still need to do in this area. Well, let me tell you. We need to build a transport hub over here somewhere so we can transport items from these two buildings at the docks and actually get them into the main storage warehouse. And we're going to need a new vehicle to handle that. I want to build a new factory over here so that we can automate the production of diamonds because that's what we're actually using for our storage upgrades. And although emeralds are actually better for storage upgrades, diamonds are going to be much easier for us to automate. So that's the route we're going to take. Over here in the warehouse, I need to add a whole bunch more stations. You may notice there's not actually any on this side and that means all the resources we're gathering here are not connected to the BPD network, which is of course Beardy's Package Delivery Service, the train that we have over at our main base that we send here to collect things when we need them. It would be nice if it could collect all the shinies over here as well, and I have no idea where we're going to hide those stations, so that's going to be fun. And then we also need to do a bunch of terraforming, we need to do some texturing on these roads around here, and essentially just get things prepared for our next project. But the problem is I've only got two days to record and edit this entire video, and I've already lost three hours this morning just because of life, so I have no idea how far through all of this we're going to get, but let's see, shall we? Which means I should probably stop waffling and start organising. The first thing I want to do is sort out this terrain just so it's a bit nicer to build on. And we're going to build a nice 1950s style petrol station or gas station for those across the pond over here. And that's what we're going to use as a drop-off point. But this terrain is not very nice to work with currently, so let's see what we can do. We'll start just by getting in a couple of walls just to get all this divided up. So we'll widen this road ever so slightly up to this wall. And I think I want to put a small sort of car park area in here. Maybe just up to this sort of area. Because what I want to make sure we're doing is building our garage up here. But not having lots of sort of overhang that we don't really need. So maybe a small set of parking bays here is going to aid with that. And then what we can do is on this side just bring it all the way out. Because we're going to need a much bigger area for the factory. But I don't think I want to bring this wall all the way to the edge here. Because it's going to make this bit feel very, very enclosed. So maybe if we just go to here. And then we can just put some trees and a bit of foliage on either side of this road. Just because, well, it's very tarmac-y at the moment, isn't it? And it'll add a nice splash of colour as well. And then on this side we'll just... Bring it right up to the road. Okay, that should do the tricks. So we'll put the diamond factory over here. We'll put the garage here and a small little car park. Let's just quickly get this terrain leveled off. And now that's done, we can see exactly what we're working with. And yep, I think this is going to be the perfect space for a garage. But before I start building the garage itself, I do think I want to actually tidy up the area around here just a little bit more. Because although I've got a bit of an idea in my head of how I want this garage to look, I still need to figure out a few bits of what materials I'm going to build it out of. So while I think about that, I figure I may as well actually just sort out the rest of these roads, get everything looking a little bit nicer, so that when we do start building, we can hit the ground running and have a beautiful area to build it in. So I fixed up the road, then immediately got distracted, and instead of texturing it, I added a small gravel car park on the lower section, and then used some coarse dirt, rooted dirt, rough gravel, and some dirty gravel to break up the surface a little bit. Doesn't that look lovely? Back up top, I put fences on the walls and marked out a rough area for the petrol station, then replaced the grass in the courtyard area with some deep slates. I grabbed some smooth basalt and sanded deep slate and mixed this into the courtyard surface, alongside some coarse dirt and grass, and then carried this on throughout the roads. I then eventually got back to the walls, mixed in some stone varieties to break up the repetitive surface, and carried this all the way around the gravel car park. The addition of some mossy blocks helped to make it look poorly maintained, and I think we're almost ready to start the garage. I have a plan, finally. And that plan is going to start here with some petrol pumps. And I was originally going to actually have these sort of done in such a way that they are the slave controllers, so that when the van comes in, it connects to the petrol pump and drops everything off. But then I got to thinking about it, and trying to make that look good and make it look like petrol pumps is just not going to happen. So instead, we'll have the van pull up, and we'll probably just collect things from underground, which gives us a lot more freedom for these pumps. And I don't know if this is going to work, but I do have a little bit of an idea. Is that going to be too tall? Maybe they should be that high. But if we use these fluid tanks, we can potentially stick some little levers on the side and some Nixie tubes on top. They do look a little bit short, actually. Maybe we should go taller. And then we could potentially double up on the levers like that. Ooh. Okay, so that gives it a number based on the redstone power. Fair enough. Kind of makes it look like it's got a price on top of it. I quite like that, actually. And then next up, I want to get some support in because we're going to put a shelter over this. 
That's probably tall enough. And then we'll have a big sheltery bit that goes across the top and then connects to a building that doesn't currently exist. And this is the bit I've been struggling with. It's what to build it out of. And I think I've got a plan and potential color palette that might work. But I need to head back to main storage and pick up a few bits. Now, what I'm thinking is we're going to use limestone for a decent chunk of it. We'll also take some diorite because if we go over here and put that in this... Whoa, what's going on here? That looks different. So part of the reason I had already lost three hours of my very tight schedule was because I was actually updating the pack this morning. And it appears there's been a fancy little update here. Oh, look at this. So you can actually get a preview of what it looks like with the different blocks. So you can see if they're connected or not. Oh, I like this. And it highlights the same block that I've already got in there, which is quite cool. But if, for example, I wanted lots of sanded diorites, if I put that back in there, does it? No, it doesn't remember. But it's got a search bar. Oh, that's nice. That's going to make things so much quicker. And even better than that, if I hold shift, it crafts all of it. Look at that. Well, that's all very fancy. Do they all look like that? They do. I mean, I don't know what I expected. They probably should, I guess. But I guess now's as good a time as any to tell you about the pack update. I have been meaning to do it for a few weeks because we have added a couple of extra mods, such as the fishing bobbers. But I've also added create power loaders, which I'm hoping are going to help with the lag issue on the server. But essentially, it gives me chunk loaders that are actually workable with create. And this brass chunk loader in particular is very, very handy. Because the problem I have is that a lot of the chunks I have loaded are purely loaded so that when trains get there, they can still pick up all the resources that have been generated. But with this, we can actually attach it directly to the the side of a train station and the chunks are not loaded unless a train turns up like this and then boom once it connects to the station the chunks will load and then that will turn on the machines it will load up the train and then when it drives off it will turn back off and that means i can probably halve the amount of chunks that i have permanently loaded on this server and that's going to make me very happy and hopefully reduce some lag spikes besides that i've also added create central kitchen because we're about to start experimenting with food and basically what this will do is actually allow us to use blaze burners as chefs and that's going to give us full access to loads of recipes. So when it does come to our food area, we're going to have a fully fledged restaurant on the go. And the last mod that I've added is create liquid fuel, which I haven't actually tested yet. But what that should let us do is just be able to pump lava directly into blaze burners. And that's the only thing it adds. Because the problem with the other ones I was looking at, the ones that actually had the straws, it added lots of stuff I just didn't really want in my world. But once I have tested that and made sure it works and just done a few other bug checks, the pack update will be on CurseForge, hopefully by the time this video comes out, if not slightly later on in the week. And that's not all, I'm also going to be doing much more regular world downloads for patrons and YouTube members, with the aim being to release a world download roughly in the middle of every month. Which does mean by the time this episode goes out, there should be another world download available for you as well. But anyway, enough distractions, we're going to be using a whole bunch of white blocks. And the other thing I want to use is a nice bright red colour. And I think we're going to go with red concrete for that. So if we grab some sand and gravel and some red dye and then chuck all that in the washer, we'll have some red concrete too. And the last thing we need is some white stained glass panes. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, we didn't need that many. Now let's do some experimenting because I don't know what block I want to use at the bottom here. I know I want it to be limestone, but there's a few different variants I want to test out and I'm already leaning towards the pillar. I think that looks better than this. Don't really want to be using plain blocks down here. And to be honest, those bricks there aren't really working for me either. So let's go with the pillars here. And let's see if we can just build up a small section of the wall and figure out how it's going to look. Because one thing I want to do is potentially something like this. If we can just double those up and stick in like a red band around the building. Although that feels a bit high up. Maybe I should actually switch these rounds. We'll try the other red block this time as well. Put those at the bottom and then we'll have white blocks on top which i guess at this stage for now let's just see what it looks like with a normal limestone kind of hard to tell at the moment i think i need to build up just a little bit more here so i can get a proper look at it let's maybe try swapping out these red blocks here i think they're a little bit busy we'll try some plain ones on this side as well so what do we think you know what i think i actually prefer just the plain red concrete yeah i think that definitely sits nicer Let's just stick a couple of fans above where the door's going to be. Okay, I think I like that. Question is, how are we going to make this sort of all tie in? Because we do need to have a shelter over this bit. Maybe just something like that and then connect it to the building. But then design-wise, I do want to try and get a bit of colour on this. So I wonder, maybe instead of using full blocks, if I was just to use some slabs here, could I then put more slabs on top and make those red? Is this going to be like really Larry? I mean, I like the splash of colour, but I don't like how it's looking. Let's just build out this side a little bit. Hmm, no, it's still looking a little bit flat, isn't it? I wonder, maybe we can poke it out a little bit. 
And maybe we can even poke it out at the bottom here as well. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Yeah, I think that's going to work. Let's get this wrapped all the way around. So I've got the rest of that roof in, and I can't decide if the petrol thing should be smaller or bigger. I'm leaning towards smaller. Let's make them smaller for now, but let me know in the comments what you think. Okay, so now we've got this section sorted. We need to figure out the rest of the building, and I guess it's going to need to be taller, otherwise that front panel is going to look weird. The question is, do we want to do a similar sort of sticky outy bit over here? Because we could potentially just sort of carry this on this way, can't we? And then just get that same sort of band running around there. And I think all of this could work. The only potential problem is that I think this roof here might be a little bit too low. Maybe I should raise the whole thing up by a block. Yep, I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to make it all a block taller. Well, I moved it up half a block in the end just to get it off that window, and I think that definitely works. And having it like that means that hopefully this will sit a little bit better on the main building as well. Oh yeah, that's really coming together. I'm liking that. I've just tried out some of these supports as well, and to be honest with you... I'm not so sold. The copper ones are a definite no. Andesite ones, maybe? It almost just feels like this roof here is like half a block too high. Maybe I could just lower that. We'll get there eventually. Let's try rejigging just this roof again. Now that feels much better. But what's going to feel better than that is having the rest of the building in. So let's just get the rest of these walls up. All right, the walls are up. It's looking good. Well, it's looking better. It's looking very plain though, isn't it? So next step. Get a roof on, get some texture in, and get a floor on the inside. And for the floor, I think I'm going to make myself some light grey concrete. So let's get that solidified. And for the door, I'm fairly sure that there's actually a glass sliding door of some kind. But I can't see it. And I also can't see any of the train stuff. So I think I just need to do a quick restart. This happens occasionally. And there we go. Our train stuff's back, which means hopefully so is our door. Yeah, there we go. This one here, I think this is what we're after. So I need some framed glass and I need a door. And hopefully this will do what I want. Yeah, look at that. Slidey door. Now, let's start with the floor here. I want to mix in a bit of texture here and there on this floor. I do want to make it look a little bit worn. And I'm wondering if we can use a sort of a combination of this sanded tough, some of the light grey concrete as well, maybe. Bit of light grey wool as well, potentially. And I don't think we need much. Just a couple of patches here and there to break it up a little bit. I think that'll do for now. Once we actually decorate the interior, that'll probably change anyway. For the roof, I'm just going to fill it all with slabs first. And then we're going to get a bit of texture on here as well. So with this, we're going to start darker at the edges with some tough maybe a little bit of cobble here and there as well then some sanded tough and a little bit of stone and then we'll have the sort of main bulk of it being andesites and we're going to need to mix this up a little bit more but you get the idea all right i think that's working but while we're up here let's add in some fans and make it look a little bit more ah. so as i was saying it's looking lovely but let's put in some roof fans here maybe we should try digging out a little bit of a hole there we go much better and just to give you a progress update on the time it's actually tuesday morning now so i'm fast running out of time to get this video done but we're making progress it's looking nice, but I have a feeling we're probably not going to get to the diamond factory today, so that's probably going to have to be Sunday. But it's fine, it just means you're probably going to get a slightly different episode in that, uh, well, you're going to get more of an insight into my build process as I talk through things a little bit more. Otherwise, you'll end up with a five-minute video, and where's the fun in that? But at least we are making progress. The roof is in, the floor is in. Now we just need to work on the outside of the building here. Although, actually, let's quickly stick the doors in. Not quite. There we go, that's what we want. Sliding doors, wonderful. Now let's just do a small experiment in this back corner here first, I think. So we'll get a bit of diorite in to begin with, maybe some sanded diorite, potentially a bit of calcite as well, maybe. And I've also got this eroded diorite, but I do worry, is that gonna be too light? Actually, I think that works quite well. And I've also got a bit of red terracotta for this, just so we can break up the sort of beam that runs around. All right, I think this could actually work quite nicely. I should be able to soften this a little bit just by doing that and using some half slabs. But I'll tell you what, there is one other thing I want, and it's something I don't have any of. But I'm sure we can find some, so I'm going to take my shears, and we're going to fly over this way where I'm fairly sure there's a big hole in the ground and an entrance to a lush cave. Yep, here we go. This is the one, and this is what I'm after, some glow lichen. Maybe some vines as well. Okay, not vines, just glow lichen. Problem is, it's not a lot of glow lichen, but I reckon we can solve that. So we'll put an observer there, an observer there, dispenser there, stick a bit of glow lichen on it, wrap a few blocks around the dispenser, and then chuck in some bone mill. That's actual bones. Let's quickly break that down. And in theory, if I just stand here and do this, I'll get loads of glow lichen. Look at that. 
Wonderful. About a minute later, we've got just over three stacks. That's much more like it. Then with a bit of glow lichen in the mix, I think this could work quite nicely. We'll also use some cut limestone on a few of the walls where we're not going to be doing heavy texturing. Yeah, I think this could work well. Let's just sort out the rest of the building. Looking good, but one thing it really needs is some lights. And for that, I think we may as well grab a few sea lanterns. And look at all these varieties we've got. Although, to be honest, I think I just want these. And what I should be able to do... Yeah, look at that. So that will light up the front area here. No, I wonder. Could I maybe do something like this? That looks horrific. We'll figure out something else for the lighting. Maybe just some of these is the way to go. I mean, they look all right, I guess. We might have to experiment with the lights a little bit. So we are almost done here, but there's definitely something missing, and that's a sign. I've got an idea for this, which is hopefully going to work, although we're not going to be able to do the full idea. We're going to have to take a bit of a shortcut today because of time, but let's try this out. So we'll just get a little pole in on the corner. Then we're going to use some red concrete here, and we're going to make a circle-ish. More of a hexagon, I guess. Replace the middle block with a light. And then we're going to use one of these, which is an immersive painting, but this is the graffiti one, so it kind of, well, basically it doesn't need to be a solid image. It can use PNGs. And I was going to make myself a custom image, but as we don't have time, I've just stolen this one from Google for now. We'll shrink that down ever so slightly to give it a border. Three by three, that should be about right. Now, how does that look? I'll tell you what, for a stolen image, it looks pretty good. We'll just stick the same thing on the other side. And if I just go into my video settings and sort out the brightness... Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. We've got a nice glowing sign up there. Oh, and look at it with the shaders. What a beautiful building. But we're not done yet. We've still got some space around here. I want to put a couple of units on the side here as well, just to give the wall a little bit more. So let's see what random stuff we can stick to it, shall we? Random things stuck on side. We'll also stick in a couple of storage tanks, I think, down here. It is a petrol station after all. And maybe we should get a couple of pipes in the ground. Just like that. There we go. That's a nice little bit of detail. And maybe on this side here, we should add some roof access so we can stick a ladder in. I'll also add in a couple of pipes over here. And I'd say, from the outside at least, that's looking pretty much done. I do still need to sort the interior, but we'll come back to that later. But now what I need to do is actually connect up the drop-off system. So if we dig a hole about here, put in a slave controller, and then we just need to get these drawers connected up to the main storage. So we've got it all linked up. Let's just check if it's in range. And it is. Beautiful. If it wasn't in range, nothing would have come out of there. So let's stick a storage interface there. And thinking about it, we're actually going to need to lower that by a block because we need to put a chute in. So a chute there, then the draw controller slave, and another trim. Then we can just use a couple of these up here just to sort of blend that in, and no one will ever know. So the garage over here is all ready to start receiving goods. However, we don't actually have a spare delivery vehicle. The ones we've already got going around are fairly busy. They've all got multiple jobs and multiple deliveries that they do. So I think a brand new delivery vehicle that just basically goes between these buildings and the garage here is pretty much what we're going to need. But we don't currently actually have a collection point down here either. So we've got a few things we're going to need to do to get this to work. But we do have plenty of space here to put something in. So that shouldn't be an issue. And although I said we need to make a new truck, we do actually have a truck here we could use. Look, I'm on a tight schedule, okay? But this truck here isn't doing anything and it is already a train. So, I mean, it'd be rude not to, right? So let's just take this round here. And I think this is about where our track ends. So I guess before we can do anything else, I'm going to need to go underground. I'm going to need to put in lots of rail to connect up all of these roads. Oh, jeez, it's going to be a nightmare. There's so much up and downhill. Well, I guess that's what I'm going to be doing for the next hour or two. But I'll see you in just a moment, hopefully with some rail all lined up. Well, 
it's not been easy, but I've managed to get all the track in position, and we're ready to basically set up the pickup points over here. So I think I'm going to do that first, and then I'll show you the route that we're taking, and, well, it, it's a little bit janky in a couple of places, but it's fine, it'll do the job. There was a lot of trial and error during all of that. So if we put three in front of this garage door here, and we put three in this little bit over here, that should be plenty. So we'll just do what we normally do. We'll use redstone links to make this work. We need one for dirt, coarse dirt, and mud over here. We'll set them all to receive. And then down here, we'll set stations. So we need three here with comparators and redstone links that match the signals up top. So that was dirt, coarse dirt, mud. Nope, wait a minute. I need to actually invert these signals. So if we do this and then put the links in, that should work much better for us. Yep, there we go. Perfect. Then we need draw controller slaves on these with some funnels. Filter those appropriately. Have them go into there. We'll give these guys a home over in the main warehouse for storage. And get these linked up so that they'll actually turn off when main storage is full. And that'll just stop the truck from overloading. Now I just need to do the same over here for the basalt. And there we go. I think we're just about done. We've also got a spare one here. But what I need now is a driver and a schedule. You'll do, sir. Oh. Let's try that again. There we go, in there. Let's set up a schedule. So his schedule is ready. The last thing I need to do is actually go back underground because I haven't connected these drawers to the things they're actually collecting yet. So we need to connect this one down here. So that should be connected. And then we need to connect this one just over to the other side here so it can get the mud and dirt. And now, yep, we've got those on the item drains ready to get collected. Same there. So I guess it's your time to shine, buddy. Let's give you the schedule. So let's see if he does what he's supposed to. And we've even got a seed in the back here so we can just sit with him while he does his job. Well, there was a slight boo-boo there. I had these stations facing the wrong way. So let's go give it another go. You can have your schedule back. It's going very slow at the moment. We're going to have to speed him up a little bit. But so far, so good. He just about makes it around this corner. He should make it around here as well. Yep, there we go. Look at that. And now we should pull into the garage nicely. Oh, we clip a curb there. I'm going to have to shrink that down. We're connected underneath, so it should be offloading everything. And then as soon as there's inactivity in the cargo for 10 seconds, it should then pull away and set off again. Hopefully. Well, I feel like it's maybe taking a little bit too long. Let's go check this out, make sure it's doing what it should be. Two hours that has taken me. I was having a lot of issues with collisions and crashes and things on this junction here. And for some reason, this delivery truck here just keeps doing weird things. And I, I don't know if it's going to work or not yet, but it, it just couldn't find its way to a station for some reason. A station it's been visiting for three months. But I think we're sorted now, so I'm just going to stand here and watch for a little bit and just keep an eye on this junction here, because this was the problem-making one. So you're probably going to see a sped-up version. Well, it's been a couple of in-game days and we haven't had any further accidents, so I think I'm safe to just leave this to run and do its thing. In fact, here it comes again. Look, I do love it. So now all that's left to do is the interior. Wow, Mr. Beardstone. Just wow. Jeez. I wonder where you got that idea from, hmm? Oh, right, I see. This is because I built a petrol station. Just... Look, just because you build a petrol station doesn't mean I can't build a petrol station. I build factories. Does that mean Foxy can't build factories? But anyway, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, I do need to sort out an interior for this place. But I've got a few ideas on how that can work. And if we turn around just like that, we have an interior. Look at that. I'm not going to lie, I did struggle a little bit here. But we've got the usual clutter you would find out the front here, including the garage flowers, of course. We've also got those at the front desk. I built some shelves out of copycat panels and just tried to fill them with whatever clutter I could find that looks slightly interesting. The majority of which is actually just mob heads and pots, I guess. And then over the back here, we've got some food and drink fridges, which I do quite like. I think they've come out well. And of course, the cashier's desk, where I've made use of some straw statues. So they're selling a few sort of plus 
plushies slash cuddly toy type things. So we've got Zloy, Mrs. B, Foxy, and myself. And we've even got to store them off behind the counter. But I think with that, we can safely say that this petrol station is done and looking pretty good. I do like it. And there was one last thing I was going to do today, which of course was to name the boat from last episode, as well as the captain and the first mate. However, that video only went out a couple of days ago and the names are still coming in thick and fast and there's some amazing options. I just want to see what else you come up with. So we'll do that at the start of next episode. And we'll sort out the proper sign for this garage as well. But sadly, that's all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.